Okay. So it's a big pleasure. Thank you very much for the invitation. Such a great place. Uh, just uh, thanks for organizing. Um, so this is my uh, title. Uh, I suppose to speak to physicists. Yeah, so not use uh, word theorem. So so if you if you if you will hear these words and just replace it by fact. Okay. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to do this uh, continuously, but who knows. And otherwise, so I thought that uh, perhaps a good strategy to be as clear that even mathematician can understand me. So in this case, perhaps physicists will be bored, but but uh, definitely not lost. So this um, TQFT <coughs> uh, was already introduced by Pavel. So it's a functor. So I think you call this functor Z, or uh, perhaps a symmetric monoidal functor from the category which you called board. So say n-dimensional TQFT or n plus one dimensional TQFT. <clears throat> this plus one just says how extended it is. It's just once extended. <clears throat> so this category has as objects and dimension closed and dimensional manifold and this morphism cobordism so n plus one dimensional cobordism between this uh, closed and dimensional manifold so let us call this category like this and I'll just be interested in the simplest and the functor to the to the category we understand yeah so we would like to learn something about this by by uh, <coughs> constructing factor from this unknown category to something we know very well and so let us consider, so the simplest example, it's when n is equal to 1. And in this case, so who is my functor? So first of all, this category, board 1, 2, I would like to construct a functor z to the vector spaces. So here, as I said before, so will be morphism will be a closed one-dimensional manifold. Um, Monoidal structure will be disjoint union of these circles. Uh, Z will associate to each circle some vector space V. To disjoint union here will be associated tensor product here. This is a map. So it's monoidal functor. It preserves a monoidal product here. So now, uh, given a cobordism, uh, we will associate here a linear map between, between corresponding vector spaces, and the most important thing is that this uh, Z needs to preserve composition in the category. So if I glue to cobordism along the boundary, uh, it should be mapped into the, it should be mapped into the composition of the linear maps on the right-hand side. So this is an example of uh, uh, one plus one dimensional TQFT, and uh, so in this case, uh, these functors are completely understood, and this uh, something deal with the fact that we actually understand completely who is this category. And this category, so this uh, board to one, as a monoidal category, is generated by the following uh, morphisms. So, so first of all, it's a pair of puns in one direction. Then it's a pair of puns in the other direction. Then it's caps, cap. And you need to, to have a symmetric function, you need this permutation morphism. So these are all generated. So because it's a little bit long time, takes a long time to draw them, I, abbreviate that one like this, I'll abbreviate that one like this, I'll abbreviate this guy. So this means it goes to the, just to the numbers, to the, to, the, to the field K. This goes from the field K to, to, to V, and this will be abbreviated like this. Okay, then our, this generator satisfy the following relations. And the relations are very nice. So, for example, so the one is uh, is like this. That this is equal to to that. So this is uh, <coughs> so-called associativity relation. Uh, so I'll draw just a few of them. And if you multiply 
with these guys, and so this this produced like this. And um, so you, you you can reflect this uh, along the horizontal line. You will get new relation for the for the other generators. And perhaps the only uh, one new relation it's a called Frobenius relation here, which uh, looks as follows. So so if you if you co-multiply and then multiply, then this is the same as the following guy. And if you do it on the other side, it's also the same. Okay? So this is a Frobenius relation. And on the other side, so there is an object which is called Frobenius algebra. And this is the object. Uh, it's again, this is in vector space with an operation M, which goes from V tensor square to V, which I'll draw like this. It's, uh, there is identity, uh, which is map from K to, to V. Then there is a co-multiplication, which is a map from V to V tensor square. Then there is a co-unit, which is a map from V to K. So this is the structure of a Frobenius algebra, and this is uh, so this is an algebra which satisfies exactly this all relation. So this is just definition of the Frobenius algebra, and uh, so well-known facts from 90s or even before that uh, one plus one TQFTs are in one-to-one -one correspondence with Frobenius algebras. Okay, so now. Uh, this was a baby example. Uh, now, so I'll speak about 2 plus 1 to QFTs. So the usual approach to 2 plus 1 to QFTs is that, so if you replace here this 1 by 2, then you have only these arrows, and which says that any so-called modular category, so this is a construction of derive, any modular category provides a 2 plus 1 to QFT. So this is the result of derive. And I'll try uh, to sell you today a different result. So I'll try to, to say that actually this is complete over. So you don't need a modular category. There is a nice construction, not using modular category, but coming just from Hopf algebra. So I'll try to argue today that uh, actually it's enough just to have a Hopf algebra, uh, to, to have a 2 plus 1 to QFT. It would be a little bit, so it will be the QFT and, uh, on a bit different category. But it would be interesting things to study, providing a lot of interesting information about three manifolds. OK, so, so let me start so, with my talk. So uh, I'll first define my main object today. It's a Hopf algebra. So uh, Hopf algebra, it's uh, defined similar to Frobenius algebra. It's a uh, vector space H together with all the structure maps. So it's a, it's a bi-algebra. So this means that it has multiplication unit, co-multiplication co-unit. And in addition, Hopf algebra has two maps, S, which is just an endomorphism of H, which is invertible. So this, these are the structure maps. And um, again, I'll use a graphical notation for multiplication the same as before, for unit the same as before, for the co-unit also, sorry, for the co-multiplication, co-unit. Now, for S, I'll, it's endomorphism of H, I'll use this. And for H minus 1, I'll use this guy. Okay? And again, in the, as in the previous case, this Hopf algebra satisfies some relations. And let me put relations here. So module following relations. So again, this is an algebra. So the multiplication, co-multiplication associative. So you have this old stuff. You don't have the Frobenius relation. So instead of the Frobenius relation, you have a fact that this is a bi-algebra. And bi-algebra means that, that uh, this delta is an algebra homomorphism. And this, uh, this looks in pictures following. So if you take two elements, multiply them, and then co-multiply. This is the same as if you multiply the first, sorry, co-multiply the second, exchange them, and then multiply what, what comes out. So this is, uh, this is a replacement for the Frobenius axiom. 
and uh, there are few axioms connecting S, epsilon, and ones, and multi multiplication, co-multiplication, which is, looks as follows. So if you if you put here your S, then this is the same as that, and this is the same also to do it on the on the other side, and similar for S minus one. So th this this is how the, the axiom looks like. And now what I'm claiming is that given this structure which I draw here, you can construct a TQFT, three-dimensional one, uh, on the following category, which I'll call three cop tilde. So this is a category where the objects are connected orientable surfaces. With, so one punctured, so with one boundary component, just one boundary component, and connected. So, so it's not the whole morphism category. And the morphism I'll be now very restricted, but morphism will be um, cobordism between them, between between such surfaces. Embedded in R3. Okay, so this is for the moment it's very restrictive, but you will see I'll 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 drop this condition later at cost of a little bit more more structure on the Hopf algebra. Okay, so uh, how it looks like so um, so this connected oriented so, uh, so the morphism looks as follows. Oh, let, let me do it here. So. So any one punctured surface looks as follows. You take a disk and you add handles to this disk. So any object in this category looks as, so you, you just add handles like this, as many as you like, okay? Now the morphism here would be a guy uh, sitting in this cube. And I'll draw this morphism in the following way. So let me take perhaps a different color. Uh, I don't know. Perhaps I don't want a different color, but okay. Um, so morphism is, for example, like this. So you, you think about this blue line as a tube in R3, and I'm removing tubular neighborhood of this line. And then I get a cobordism from uh, genus one surface to genus two surface. Okay, so this is how. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm 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 doing this like this. This is cobordism. So, so first of all, uh, let me mention that connected oriented surfaces I can just uh, identify with natural numbers. By uh, this natural number is just a genus of a surface. So zero, it's just a disk. One, it's uh, genus one, and so on. And so, so this would be a, uh, this, this would be cobordism under this identification from two to one. Okay. So, uh, so let me draw another cobordism in the same way. Okay. So, let me perhaps uh, immediately uh, introduce a little simplification for drawings, such things. Otherwise, I'll spend all my time drawing. So. Is it okay? So in the in the in the future, I'll draw this just like that. So this is this is abbreviation. And then I would like to consider another cobordism, uh, which is uh, so another example. So such such cobordism, it would be cobordism from one to one. So we should think of this picture as handle decomposition, basically. <laughs> I mean. It's uh, it's just a cobordism in R three. So I mean, clearly, uh, clearly, I represent the surface by handle decomposition, but it's not a handle. Where is genus one on the bottom? Ah, g exactly. No, again. So this is very important. So I'm I'm removing a tubular neighborhood. Yeah, that's so not genus not genus one on the on the bottom is this disk together with the boundary of this tube, and this is genus one surface. So this is a morphism from genus two upstairs and genus one downstairs. Okay. So and now I'm I'm in the same spirit. Let me uh, let me draw 
another such a guy. Okay, this is a morphism from one to one again. And now I would like to explain, so who is, so this was from two to one, this is from one to one. I should be able to compose this, these guys. And I'll tell you how, how do I compose. So when I compose, I should get somebody who goes from two to one. So this means that uh, I'll draw it like this. So this is two and this is one. So I'm starting uh, by drawing the bottom part where something non-trivial happens. So or perhaps even doesn't matter. So so this is this is my non-trivial part of the boundary, and then so so I'm I'm and then in the handle itself there are just two lines which which go through the two parallel lines go through the handle. Yeah. And now I'm taking this handle, composition means that I'm taking this one handle and I'm gluing it inside of this tube which is here. So what happens, uh, so the composition looks like, so I'm now gluing this, this handle and I'm getting, I'm getting that. Okay, so this is a composition. Okay, so it's, it's, it's just a topological composition. <coughs> yeah, just gluing, gluing uh, this, this handle into, into the handle which goes here. Okay, so this is my category. So it has identity morphism for any object. So any object N has identity morphism, which looks as follows. So if I have here N handles, then identity, identity guy looks just like this. So you can, you, you can multiply this, with, uh, so compose with any other, you will get just exactly the other guy back. This is the identity. Uh, what else should I see? Should I say? Ah, it has monoidal structure. So, and this is monoidal structure here. It's different from the monoidal structure here, given by the disjoint union. And here, monoidal structure is just stacking together. So, if, for example, um, if I have another one, so so it just starts gluing together. So, if I have guy two like this. The monoidal structure, so it's a, a tensor product. Say, it's it's uh, it sent me. So it goes from two and one into plus into two plus one. Okay, so so this is so it's gluing along along this this boundary. So this is a monoidal structure on the on the category. Okay, so this is my, my category. And now what I'm, uh, I'm uh, claiming, and this is fact which will, was known to many people, uh, that uh, in this category, tilde COP3, there is a Hopf algebra object. So, so I think it was Crane, Yeter. Clearly, it was clear to Lubashenko. Um, so, Habiro used it also later. Okay. So, so this fact says the following. So, the object one in this category. Um, is a Hopf algebra object. <coughs> okay, so what does it mean? This means the following. That uh, I can construct, so th this means that uh, it has the whole structure which is listed here. Yeah, so I can multiply to, to such a guy, so there is a morphism from one tensor one, which is the same as one plus one to one. There is a co-multiplication, which is go from one to one plus one, so to two. Oh, let, me, let me write this from two to one, from one to two. Um, there is a 
identity, which is a map from zero to one. And there is co-multiplication. I'll, I'll draw them. I'll draw you. So, so let me draw multiplication. So multiplication is it's exactly what you have seen already. So multiplication is a map from two to one. And this is this map. Co-multiplication is a map from one to two. And this is a map which looks as follows. This is a co-multiplication. So uh, one is a map from zero to one. So it's just that map. Then epsilon, it's a map from one to zero, which looks like this. So it's a, so just empty empty diagram. There is there is no tube inside. Then there is s and s minus one, which I'll draw immediately. So S is a guy, it's a map from one to one, which looks like like this. And S minus one, it's again a map from one to one, which is looks very similar, but just curl on the other side. So it's this curl like that. Okay, so, so I'm claiming that uh, this picture satisfy all relations which, uh, which, are, which, which are drawn here. And so just uh, because we have so much time, so let us just check, uh, check one relation. So I suggest we, ch we check this relation, that so this is satisfy for, for, my, for my things. And to do this, I need to compose, so I need to, so, okay, so let us check this relation. In my pictures, so this means that I, <clears throat> I, so this is a morphism from one to one. So I'll draw a diagram which looks like this, okay? So I need to put <coughs> um, multiplication first. So, <coughs> so this is a multiplication. So I'm 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 reading from <coughs> from from up to, to to down. So this is faster multiplication. Then I need here to to insert this uh, s s is z. So for this two strand, I I need to do z. to do this. This is staying. And now I need to co-multiply this to, to bands. And the co-multiplication is this guy. So, so I'm putting this one on top and this one on the bottom. Okay. So this is this is this is a picture. <coughs> this looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, so, so it's unfortunately it was written at the beginning without all this picture with the C F O. It's um, it was kind of not really. But I'm trying to tell you that it's a lot of fun really yeah. to do this picture. Yeah. So so now what do you see here? So I see I see this part which by Rademeister two move can can be isotope so through this line. So there are, there are two crossings and they both down. So I can just isotope, I can, I can pull it up. And then, uh, so this is just isotopy from this guy to the guy here, which looks like, and now uh, the whole thing will go out, out from the handle. And then I will see this picture, uh, which, is, uh, which is like that, and it goes down. Do you agree? So I will I will have this curl on the other side. Okay, I can draw you the, the curl exactly on the, on the on the on the correct side. Why does it give the second twist? Which second twist? 
the one you just drew. Yeah. It's right. It's, it's, right there. it's here. So if you if you remove, so it's here. It's this oh, one. Oh, here. Okay. So. Okay. So, what what do the twists mean? I mean, in this like. So I mean, it's a, it's a tube. It's a tube. This is a tube, and this tube I can embed in R3 this way. Okay, so it's a... Yeah. So it's, uh, so I mean, it's uh, it's always, so, so you can think about this frame right. links or whatever, but but here it's completely clear because I'm thinking about this as a tubular neighborhood of, uh, of a handle. Sure, I mean, I guess, so can I see that, like, why am I not allowed to remove the twist? If I, the kink, I guess. It's my Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm on topology. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in this category. Yeah, in this category, it's it's a matter how do I embed this uh, this surface into R3. Otherwise, it's uh, all pulled. Yeah. So so I mean, it's not isotopic, if you wish. So if it would be if if it would be just a line, then you will have Rider Master one move. It would be isotopic, but it's not a line. It's a tubular neighborhood of uh, of of this line. So so it's not. I see. Okay. 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 So so it's it just it's uh, for the moment it's just topology. So I'm I'm doing something just in this in this category which I define here, and and here I'm I'm speaking about handles, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a line times an interval. So so it's a, there is no so it's a ribbon if you wish it's it's not it's not isotopic too. So so like if you if you take a ribbon, and if you twist this, it looks like this. Okay, uh, maybe that's my question. Where why, why do I have a ribbon, rather? B because this is how my category is defined. Um. It's not so. It's not link embedded into something. So it's defined again. So, uh, uh, so it's uh, this, this this picture means that I have a cobordism in R three from a surface of genus two to surface of genus one, and surface surface of genus one it's a tubular neighborhood of this guy. Just for definition. Just, it's it's not a line. Yeah, but, uh, that I understand. I, mean, <laughs> I, just don't, I, I don't see why. I mean, maybe 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 your question should be what the equivalence relation on cobordism is. Uh, and algebra, it will come. So this is this is that. Yeah. So so I'm, I'm just I'm just not so good in drawing to draw a real tube. Uh, perhaps you wait a little bit. It will okay. be clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but for the moment, there is no, uh, so there is nothing. It's just playing with pictures. It feels like there's some sort of framing on. Sorry. It there? feels like there's some sort of framing on these tubes that's not allowed to twist. No, it's allowed to twist. So, so twist. So, so I mean, t tube. Yeah. I mean, this would also be my feeling. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, tube. It's the same as a choice of uh, of this yeah, line together with a normal like together with a normal vector line. field. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, the yeah, so, so exactly. So embedding of us, it's, you, you can identify. So this is, is the same information as a line uh -huh. because it's a normal vector field. So uh -huh. Sure, yeah. So. But I have a different embedding to different by marking pass function. Exactly, on, the, on this surface, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. This twist. Uh, exactly, it's, it's this T in the mapping class group of the torus here. Okay, so so okay, so let me finish this. Now uh, this one you can you can draw it a little bit uh, more prettier. So in this way as I had it before. In this way, I, yeah, exactly. In this in this way, so you just push it on the other side. Now you can uh, you can pull it down, and then you will see that uh, that this is actually exactly that, and this is exactly what correspond to composition system. Okay. So, so I'm actually, so I'm just saying, so there is an Hopf algebra object in in this category, and this allows me actually to immediately construct the TQFT. Um, perhaps in order to get a little bit more interesting TQFT, I can introduce even more structure in this category. Consider this three cop tilde even as a braided monoidal category. Now, 
which means that which means that I can uh, define the braiding operator as following. So this is a morphism from two to two as it should be, and uh, it satisfies uh, Jan Bach's equation. So this is a braiding. And now, uh, as such, so as braided monoidal, uh, uh, three cop tilde is generated by just object one. So this is just object one, which is which is just surface of genus one with one boundary component. Multiplication unit for the multiplication, co-multiplication, co-unit S, S minus one. So this is uh, what I'm listing as a morphism which I draw here. So this, uh, so this morphism generate this three cop uh, uh, according, so using the braided structure and the monoidal structure. Um, and two additional guy which are related to the twist. So this V, it's a guy, it's a morphism from zero to one, which looks as follows. And so V minus one, it's just the inverse twist. So it's uh, this guy. So I'm, I'm just, so you see, I have, uh, so I'm trying to, to, to model, model what we had in dimension two case. So where we, we could uh, complete, represent the category by generating the relations. And now I have something very similar. So okay, it's, it's still a baby version of a, of a, of a, of a, of a real borders and category, but still for that one, it's generated just by one single object and a finite number of morphisms using the braiding and monoidal structure. So this is something which you would like to see. And now uh, giving all this, I can write down that uh, that I have immediately a TQFT. So this uh, all produced me a TQFT. So, so again, fact, again, known to the same people which were listed before, that now any Ribbon Hope algebra So this is Hope algebra which is the same structure as I had before so M one delta epsilon S and S plus minus one and in addition I have a braiding so the R matrix in this in this Hope algebra and I have a ribbon element which I'll call V which is also invertible. So this is this structure called Riebenhoff algebra. And for each such Riebenhoff algebra, there exists a braided monoidal functor. Functor uh, which goes from Z, so sorry, which I call Z, which goes from the three cop tilde to the category of H mod. Okay, and this functor is completely determined by the image of one there. So, so if I, I tell you, so this this structure, so I have to all structure should be should be made to the structure here. So I uh, I just need to tell you who is the, who is who is the image of this of this uh, of this one on the right hand side, and uh, this is what Lubashenko did, and he did. Even he constructed this functor, so it's, it's much more general for any braided monoidal category. He constructed such a guy, and who who is here? So the mathem mathematician call it core end of the category. So in our case of H mode, this core end is just exactly H itself, with uh, considered as a, a joint representation of itself. So so the action, this action is given by so A acts on H. S A1, H, S A2. Where this is a Swedish notation for the co-multiplication. So the co-multiplication of A, I'm writing as A1 tensor A2. Okay, so 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 this so basically 
the whole thing is just determined by the age. But it's not like a regular representation, it's a joint representation. Okay? So this, this is, uh, again, so this is, um, is somebody interested? I can give references. So we didn't, uh, we are still si sitting here, so now I'll try to, 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 to make it more interesting. And instead of looking at the, this uh, cobordism all embedded in R3, I would like to look at any cobordism. And any cobordism can be obtained from such a cobordism which I draw here by uh, doing some surgery. So I hope everybody knows what is a surgery. Okay. Just, if not, just tell me. Stupid question. So this is a unique then, or what? Sorry? This functor is then unique, or what? So given given this, given given that, yeah, yes. or and given this category, yeah, it's it's uniquely determined by that, yeah. Yeah. So could you remember what R? R is the R matrix. So it's a it's a Ravenhoff algebra, so it has R, which is a universal R matrix. If you wish, so it's a morphism from H tensor square to H tensor square, which satisfies the uh, the young Baxter. Uh, which satisfies that. So you 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 draw you draw for R, you you draw it like this. This morphism and it satisfies following that this is equal to the okay so you can move down okay so perhaps I didn't do this correctly oh my god so let me let me do it like this okay so satisfy this equation Okay, then. Um, v, v was the same. And V and V is a ribbon element, ribbon element. So which I will draw here also like that. Yeah. So so for any R matrix. So so quantum group is an example. So just think about quantum group. So any quantum group has all the structure and has uh, S matrix. Sorry, has this uh, antipode and has R matrix and has ribbon element. Okay. So I can write formula if you wish for. Do you want formulas for the for the for the for the quantum groups? No, good. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> any questions so far? Okay, so now um, to do the surgery, uh, what I need now in, in, to introduce a new components. So I, I would like to like to have some surgery components here, or even surgery links, like for example something like this. So, so I'll I would like not only have this tube, so this cobordism which just represent me how so the. the the cobordism is embedded in R3, but I would also like to, to be able to do surgery on some uh, links embedded into these cobordisms. Okay, to do this, I need an additional generator. And uh, so this, I'll, so the generator will just look look like this, or perhaps I, I will use a different color. This. So if I, on reach my structure, which I have here of H, uh, sorry, 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 so of this of three cop. So this this is the whole structure of my, for the moment of this uh, embedded in our three uh, category of cobordism, which I, if I am reached by just such a guy, which has, a, which just ha have a trivial loop over over a non-trivial essential loop in this in this in this one to to zero cobordism. Then I can compose this guy with with all other using my braining and so on, and I'll I'll arrive at such pictures. Okay. And now, uh, who? So the only thing what I need now to find out. So to, to whom I should send this guy when I'm uh, enlarging my uh, TQT functor from three cop to, to H mod. 
And uh, this is always possible. So in the case uh, if uh, H is finite dimensional, then uh, again, it's a rat for the perhaps green theories, and there exists so-called integral. So there exists uh, an integral in any in any finite dimensional Hopf algebra, you have a special element which is called integral, which are uniquely defined up to normalization by the following property. So if you take any, any x in your Hopf algebra, you co-multiply x and evaluate by lambda on one side, then this is the same as lambda evaluated on x times the identity in the Hopf algebra. One in the whole culture. So, so you have such, such. Uh, so it's uh, this. Uh, it's, uh, so, so basically, what I'm saying, this is some, some, some sequence of equations, and this equation has unique solution for any finite dimensional Hopf algebra. Okay. And now, uh, so why, why is this is interesting? Because this is exactly what Kirby move does. Because if you look at the Kirby move, so what happens? You, you, you have one component which can be linked or noted. You have another component, say, coming to this one. The Kirby move, second Kirby move, which is the most complicated one, allows you to, to slide one component along the other component. Now, if you look uh, at the invariant of this link, so if you just draw, uh, look what, what all this linking and uh, noting of this component will produce you for this component, just an element of the algebra X. So if you put the uh, universal R matrix, blah, 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 uh, so, so there is construction which provides you just X here. And uh, after sliding, instead of X, if you exactly slide the same way, you will have here delta X. And now if you evaluate this uh, X with your integral lambda, so then what you have on that side, it's exactly lambda of x times identity, and on that high side, you will still evaluate this with lambda. You will have the left-hand side of this equation. So you have an uh, element which, is, uh, which was known long before in the theory of Hopf algebra, for example. Uh, so my people in the 60s, they were working, it's like uh, a dual to the Haar measure on the, on the Hopf algebra. So if, you, if h is just uh, it's just a um, group algebra for, for some finite group. Uh, and if you now send this guy, it's a morphism from 1 to, to, to 0, if you just send it to this integral, which is an h star, which provides exactly the morphism from, from 1 to 0, and uh, it's invariant under, under add action if, in addition, if you are h, if h is unimodular, then actually uh, lambda preserves the, so it's a, it's an add invariant map. So it's a, it's exactly m map on that. So it's it's not only any any map from H. So it's not not just an arbitrary home. Uh, from here to, to say my numbers, but it's uh, it's invariant under this uh, adjoint action, so it's a home from, so it's an invariant map, so so it exactly matches what 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 we. So this is some technical condition I can explain for people who are interested, but it's always satisfied for all quantum groups. Okay, so so now with with this addition, what we what we have is that we uh, if we define now. Uh, a category which is just three-dimensional cobordisms by taking still a isomorphism, sorry, as an object are the same as before. So objects are the same as before. So this means it's uh, connected one punctured surfaces uh, and morphism now any any cobordism. Okay, orientable or uh, compact cobordism between them. Then uh, H 
together with lambda, so all structure which you have before. So, so this means that uh, if I have a ribbon, okay, unimodular, finite dimensional, okay, finite dimensional, unimodular uh, ribbon algebra, ribbon hop algebra. Uh, provides a functor z from 3 cop to um, to h mod. Okay, determ uh, again determined just by sending one to the adjoint representation. Okay, good. So. You can also extend this. So, so should I tell you something about what are the vector spaces in this category associated to the torus and puncture torus? Should I tell you? Okay. Okay, so, so if you ask yourself, so who is the vector space associated? So who is Z of uh, S1 times S1 with a puncture? Then uh, in my picture, this will be uh, all, uh, so this will be such pictures. So it will be here, any object, say X of my category, H mod. Sorry, I'm, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, what's, what was the difference between 3 cop tilde and 3 cop? Uh, because in Srikop, uh, here it was additional. So for tilde, I had here embedded in R3, okay, which I drop now because it could be any, it could be any cobordism with parameterized boundary. So my boundary is really embedded, but but uh, this need not to be embedded because I added what I added at surgery. So this uh, the addition here is that this guy with a green line goes to the to the lambda. So this is this is a new and this allows me to to work with any cobordisms. Okay. So so now the pictures will be as I said the pictures will be what what I had before together with close component uh, green color is close component which you should understand is really you should remove the neighborhood of this component and uh, using framing, so it has it, it may have frame framing. So if you if, if I compose this guy with, a, with one of my Vs, I'll get the arbitrary framing on this component. So, okay, so, so who is... So you get to this lambda is... Integral. It's called integral. If integral is finite dimensional, and if it's unimodular, it's also about... This is the dual to the hard measure, you see. Exactly. So the integral in the case when my Hopf algebra is just a group, uh, group algebra for finite group, this is just a how measure, yeah. And if it's unimodular? U unimodular, so, okay, so. So, so then uh, is integral is not necessarily finite, or what? Sorry? So what is, if it's unimodular, then lambda exists, but. No, 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 I'm saying if it's finite dimensional, then lambda always exists. Okay. Okay. Sometimes it exists if it's uh, infinite dimensional, but it's uh, it's uh, subject of research for the moment. But here you assume it's unimodular. Okay. So then, how do you, what's the lambda in that case? As it has nothing. Unimodular has nothing to do with lambda. So unimodular is assumption about a dual guy to this uh, integral, which is uh, which is co-integral, which is. Uh, our co integrals defined by this property. So, uh, so, 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 if you, uh, if I should be really, if I would speak to a mathematician, I would tell you that this is a right integral, and there is also left integral, which you put it on the other side, and I would say that this is a left co integral, and there is also the right co integral, and the unimodular means that the left is equal to right, and it holds for any quantum group. So. So it's uh, okay. But I thought in this statement of this fact there. So, uh, so you map this to lambda. Yeah, yeah. So I need so so I need here unimodular 
because uh, I need that this lambda is not arbitrary form on H, but uh, actually it's a, it's a map from H to constants, which is invariant under the adjoint action. Uh, or with other, so, or in other words, perhaps this is more, more, more familiar for you. So if H is unimodular, then, then lambda is an element of so-called Q characters on H, which are all forms on H with the property that phi of AB is equal to phi S square B A. So, this are, so for example, all quantum character on simple representation, they, are, they all satisfy, they, they are, so, sorry, all Q traces, they are such. So, so this is an at invariant map. You can check it very easily. And I'm saying if H is unimodular, then lambda is here. And in general, if it's not unimodular, then it's not necessarily there, and then I cannot, I cannot, I cannot do it. Okay? Good. Okay, so, so who is the space of this guy? So, so it's a space of such pictures, so Z of such pictures, where here F, it's any map from X to Y, and here Y star, uh, where so modulus the equivalence relation, so this should be mapped by, so it should be mapped so if, to that F star here, Y star X. Okay, so, so it's basically, it's a space of all maps from X to Y for any object <coughs> X and Y in my category, modulus this equivalence, this equivalence relation. And uh, this is exactly, so this is called coend by definition, coend of H mod. <coughs> I told you that this is just exactly my H uh, as an adjoint representation. So this is not a trivial fact, but I can give you a reference if you want. But, but uh, so, so this is, so the space uh, which associated to punctured surface is just H. So this is clear. So it's, uh, and now uh, space which is associated just to the torus, so this is a space of home, again, added variant maps from H to 1 to K. It's a tensor 1, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a space of such maps. And this is, a, this is exactly the space of Q characters, as I defined there. <coughs> Q characters of H. So it's a space of all forms on H which satisfies. So it's not trace functions, but it's like truncated trace function by a square. So it's a quantum trace function, if you wish. And now if you would like to, 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 to see who is associated with like a dual of that, then this would be a space of all home from K to H. And this is exactly the center of the center of my uh, so center of H, center of the Hopf algebra. And now the um, SL2 representation will uh, act between between these two. It will connect these two, the so space of Q character and Z. And uh, so Lukashenko, const uh, so, sorry, Lubashenko constructed such a uh, um, such uh, SL2Z representation, and this, I think, is the only thing which is really constructed for the, for the restricted quantum SL2, or perhaps it would also work for the SLN, but it's just computed for SL2. You have, um, you have natural maps, of, even for all quantum groups, you have natural maps between the Q characters and the center of H. So you have quite a few famous maps of this kind. So the first one is the Drinfeld map. So the Drinfeld <coughs> map, so let's put D for Drinfeld. So it, it takes a Q character, Q 
chi here, and then send it into Hopflink, where this component is evaluated by chi. So, so, so here, this is so in, in formulas. So, for this is a monodromy matrix of a quantum group. What I draw here, so monodromy matrix of the quantum group. It's something like. R, R, R to 1, something like this, composition of these two R matrices. And this is an element in H tends to 2. And you evaluate one of them with this char character. You get an element in H, which is actually an element in the center. So you can, uh, you can see that it's commute with everything. So, so, so this is a Greenfield map. And there is another interesting map, which, is, uh, which goes in the same direction. So this is a Greenfield. And there is another map, which is called Radford map, which uh, which associate to any Q character. It's associated with the following element, which uh, you take uh, your co-integral and you, you evaluate your character on the C1 and you let here C2. So if you don't know co-integral, there is a very nice, so this is a Radford map, there is a very nice inverse of this map, R minus 1. Uh, which takes here central element Z, and it's sent here into a form lambda Z, which is defined on any x as just lambda evaluated on Zx. So, so as you see, a Radford map is an is a, is an isomorphism. Greenfield map is also an isomorphism, and you you construct the SL to Z representation as a stick of T. So the mapping class group representation on the on the on the torus by taking for s, uh, which will be mapped from z h to z h. You 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 uh, so z will send to, I think Greenfield minus one of z Radford. So this is the s matrix, and the and the t is just um, basically the ribbon element. Okay, so this is this is all. Uh, this is especially for for Sergey because he ordered this. Um, so the, I think it's all what what the people known. So in this case, so for example, already to compute uh, some some action on the like uh, higher genus, I think there is no work in this direction. An explicit computation exists only for so-called restricted quantum SL2. And the sent in this case is really much bigger. So it's uh, so if you consider this uh, this restricted quantum group and at two p root of unity, then uh, dimension of these spaces is uh, of z and z is three three p minus one. So it's much bigger than in just semi simplification like Richter drive. And uh, these matrices are known explicitly, and they are related to conformal quantum field series. This S and uh, and T matrices. And now I wanted to, uh, so now it will be much less technical. Um, and I just wanted to discuss some advantages and disadvantages. And if you connect it to Sarah's talk, which uh, was a few weeks ago or a week ago, this conformal field theory is in this case logarithmic. Exactly, it's a logarithmic. That's, that's the character. It's a, okay. So are T and R realized in the 2D T T? Like, is there any cobordism such that this is the, what you associate with the cobordism? Sorry, I, I missed the beginning uh, of your so question. D and R here are now defined using 2D T T, right? But can they be uh, what the T T found associated to some cobordism between two uh, torus? Ah, so 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 any cobordism between or uh, any cobordism, say uh, okay example. Any cobordism say between torus puncture torus and puncture torus, yeah. It's a picture which looks like uh, say uh, here you have a complicated node, it's something like this, yeah. And uh, so each time if you see a crossing, you associate R matrix. Uh, of your H, if you see, uh, uh, if you so, so you, you basically so given such a picture, you decompose this picture into the generators which I gave you, and this is always possible. This was the fact which I uh, 
listen some some somewhere and then to each to each uh, generator you you have expi so explicit map on the algebra side you compose all these maps and you have basically in this case you will have an element of h yeah and this is this is what is associated to this cobordism by the qft what i was speaking there about is, is what the whole space associates say to the so what is the whole space of all, all such guys yeah Could you realize D, this Jungfrey map, as a coordinate? Yeah, if you write down the coordinate, it corresponds to. to uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so to S, so S actually, so. Uh, um, so you, you should let it open because it's it's act on, on everything. So, 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 so what acts on, on such. So it's. Uh, so, okay. So. Uh, Lubashenko draws here, so, so exactly. So this is this is a cobordism which corresponds to S, and this is a cobordism which corresponds to T. Cobordism for D, I can take S and yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. You can put, yeah, you can you can put such things yeah. So you, I mean, you, you can compose them. Okay. I didn't understand Sergey's comment about logarithmic CFTs. Is this something I should understand? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me neither. So at least I'm the wrong person to ask. So. Um, but well, she made the statement that uh, that this is related to CFTs, and I was just pointing out that these are logarithmic CFTs, not not the rational CFTs. But they could also be rational. Not in this case. Uh, you you don't you, uh, so I mean which case so uh, this is a very general construction. Yeah, in the case for UQSL2. Yeah, uh, yeah. For this is, restricted UQSL2, yeah. it's uh, it's a logarithmic. Yeah. Uh, the question which may be raised. So here we can see the cobordisms which have one boundary component. Exactly. So one, I guess one can consider the forgetful functor to the usual category of logarithms. Just by identifying then you then you you will you know for instance boundary, right? You you are losing you're losing monoidal structure if you do that. It's not possible to it's yeah, you you exactly e exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so that's that's the main point. So so I'm I'm coming to this exactly. So uh, fine. So so I, now I would discuss about what. Uh, so it's a very old construction. So the Bashenko paper about this. So they were they very uh, they were written in categorical language. It was uh, heavy mathematics. Not many people. So this picture came much later. Uh, so and people didn't work actually on this by the following reason. So. So let me first say something good about this construction. So what is the advantages of this construction with respect to the one uh, of Wittner-Stichin to Rai, which we know? So first of all, uh, the most important one, each mode need not to be simple. And uh, the, the, the only one example which is completely computed is this restricted one to SL2. And this has uh, uh, a lot of projective modules, uh, in decomposable projective modules, which really uh, uh, came into play. And this is why the space is 3P dimensional, not P minus one dimensional, and VRT case, and so on. So, so it's really non-simple. Non so it's, it's much bigger world than just the, the simple board. So that's the okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So this is this is the first thing. Second thing. So this is perhaps uh, my personal opinion, but I like it. So so I, I think it's much more conceptual than than the than the one of VRT. So you don't cut artificially something and so on, and uh, and then wow something happens. But it's like you you just have so so basically in Lubashenko language it's just given any braided monoidal category is a coent of this category. It's exactly what you should associate with this object one. So it's always exist. It's, it's just it's just so so categorical that probably categorifying this should be should be just just only pleasure. Okay. Um, and uh, it deals with so, uh, and the, uh, the main idea here also that you are working with algebra, so you work with algebra 
and not with the modules of this algebra. Because as I told you, and this is much easier. So usually the work, for, given an algebra, is just, just vector space with some relations. Yeah, to understand for this relation the whole category of modules, it's a hard thing. And this is why the, 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 it was not developed. Because, for example, people, even for, for, for this restricted SLN, nobody knows who is the center and what is the dimension, or nobody knows what is this Q character and what their dimension is. But uh, in order to construct this TQFT, you don't need even to, to know this. You just, I mean, the construction goes on the level of H. Because the I only. The dimension is known, but yeah, it's complicated. It's complicated. So you, you give me the paper, mathematical one. Good. Okay, so so um, I, I mean to, to, to for example to compute invariance, you, you just need to know who is H and you don't need to classify all modules all in decomposable over over this algebra. Okay? So this is I think this is the main two advantages which you and now uh, so the disadvantages. So everything so it could not be only nice. So the one disadvantage which uh, So, so the one disadvantage is if uh, if you say closed three manifold M is not a rational homology sphere. So this means homology has some free parts, has z component. In this case, uh, z of M is zero. Okay. And this uh, fact, so okay, and then some people came, so let me call this theorem, because this is not a real theorem, uh, came and started to say, okay, but if M is a Q homology sphere, then in fact, Z of M is determined with some coefficient by VRT of M. Okay? And so, and this was like people already in the end of 90 started to prove such theorem. But I have no seen any real proof of that. So, so I, I'm, I'm just I don't know. So this, uh, this I, I, I can tell you where the, the mistakes are in the in the in the published proofs, but I, I don't know whether it's true or not. It's not a fact. Uh, it's not a fact exactly. <laughs> so this, this a is, 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 is this is a theorem, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so this, this I don't know. It's maybe, it's maybe not. It may be in some cases. So, uh, th but, but I think it was, uh, it was sufficient to, to kill the, this direction, because why should we study something which is determined by something else, which we know? But, uh, but in reality, so in order, so this is, this is just like. Uh, cheap fact which you can improve. So this you can immediately improve, and then it will be, so you, you will profit from this world which you, which you constructed. And how do you improve this? So where, where does it come from? So that, that, that this invariant is often zero. It comes from the fact that, for example, so let us consider the easiest case, like uh, let us consider Z of S3, and say I put some node inside, uh, say even trivial node, so I'm not uh, color it by, say, some projective module. So projective module, for those who don't know, this is just a direct sum of H. So H, you consider H as a regular module over itself, say, by left multiplication. You can act on H, then it's module over itself. This module is free. And if you decompose this module into direct sum, any sum is a projective one. Yeah, but not, not the module, for example, SL2, no of the of the, of the simple module will occur there, so, but only projective, okay? Uh, and if you would like to compute this, what you will see, so, so everything will be one, so you will just uh, stay with your unknot, and basically to compute the invariant, what you're always doing is you, you're taking so-called quantum trace of this guy, yeah? And who is a quantum trace? Say if we, if we, okay. So in this case, let us let us. So the easiest case where projective module is already the fundamental representation, two-dimensional one. Uh, it's the case uh, of this restricted SL2 where Q is just I. 
Okay, so this is uh, this is the case where already the fundamental of the quantum trace of this guy. Perhaps you know it's a quantum two, and this is i plus i minus one, and this is zero. Okay, and um, I can give you so for any projective module for those who know so this is I can give you a conceptual argument why it's always zero if something projective. So if you color something with something projective, and if you in the whole this theory you color everything with h, h is projective. Because it's a free module over itself, so so it's everything. So clearly, so if you if you do something a little bit not not canonical, for example, if you uh, go out of this Q homology sphere, then it's easily becoming zero. And in fact, this is why why does it happen? Because we are just this is not the right thing to do. That's all. Yeah, you just modify your trace. And this modification of this trace, it was uh, so. Uh, by the way, in this case. This was studied by Biro, and this was studied by, so the, the not invariant in this case is known, and it's Alexander polynomial, or even multivariable Alexander polynomial. Um, and how you do this, you, you, so in order to obtain this invariant, so this again was, was known at least 20 years before, you, you close up with a different trace. And this different trace, so this was formalized by Gia Paturo with some collaborations. Collaborators. So these two people came with a definition of what should be the right closing operation here, and this uh, right closing operation is called modified trace. Okay, and this is defined on any, uh, say, uh, I, I'm just interested here on H mod. So what is that? It's uh, a family of trace functions on the endomorphism of uh, any object P. So this is, this is a family of such functions, which for any projective module, which are, first of all, it's a trace function. So this means uh, it satisfies the trace relation. So, so for any composable pair of morphism, so if my endomorphism of P factorizes into F and G like this, then I can move one on the other side and I, I, I'll get the trace relation. And the second, the most important one, it's called partial trace relation, which tells me the following. So, so if I have... So I, I have T for any family of projective modules. So projective modules are, are build a tensor ideal. So this means that the tensor product of projective is any other, it's projective. So therefore, I can, for any module like this, I can compute this T. And uh, on the endomorphism of this guy, which is P tensor V. So on any such endomorphism, I would like to compute my trace. And this should be equal to trace of P of the partial, so this is called categorical trace. So if so this is this is um, co-evaluation and the morphism evaluation. So this is a categorical trace and category. So, so I need this partial trace property in order to have link invariant at the end, in order that my, my closure is well defined. So so the guy with these two properties is called modified trace. And they, they, they studied a lot of this object in, in different categories, so they give some properties, which category has this, and so on. And, uh, but it was no, like, uh, I think they started this already 10 years ago. But it was not understanding, hmm? sorry? Sorry, didn't in conformal field theory, these are twining traces. What's the name of this? When you try to endomorphism and Um, yeah, some, yeah, let me, no, I don't want to fully commit. <laughs> I guess it's just like the usual trace, but we just insert some of one. Yeah, if you insert like a group element into the trace, yeah, yeah twining. Modifying the trace. But, uh, yeah, exactly, this, uh, this will come, this will come. So, so this is, this is basically, um, yeah, along the, the, the time cycle, basically, that would be called twining, and along the space cycle, it would be called twisting. Oh. 
Okay, so this will be fact. And this is uh, so our recent collaboration together with uh, Azad Gainuddinov, Christian Blanchet. And so we actually understood so who is exactly this? So what, what is the space of all such traces in uh, in this category? And so uh, so we we really walk with mild so exactly this is the hypothesis we need. So if we have a finite dimensional unimodular, or perhaps we, we also say pivotal unimodular hop algebra. So uh, pivotal, this means that uh, that uh, you have an element in the algebra which, which implements a square for any x. So this means, and this uh, this g is called pivotal element. So this is exactly what we were speaking about. So, so basically, this uh, g is responsible. So if you have this, you can draw such a picture in your H mode. Otherwise, you cannot because it's uh, it makes the isomorphism between so S squared double dual and and uh, and the algebra itself. Okay, so so if you have this, uh, so this is really minor hypothesis on the Hopf algebra, then uh, the space of modified traces on H mode is one dimensional. Uh, determined by by the just trace on the projective generator of this category. Sorry, perhaps trace modified traces on H P mode because uh, exactly so on H for normal modules. Which are not projective, I can still I can stay with the quantum trace, and this will be non-zero. On projective module, which are, which is a new feature in this in this non-semisimple TQT, all these traces are zero. But I would like still to, to, to learn something about them, so I'm modifying my trace, and uh, this is a trace on this projective ideal, and this is determined by the following facts that uh, that uh, this T on H. So it's enough to determine this on H, because any other in the proposal projective is direct sum of this, and I can I can project on this with item potent. And if and for any endomorphism of H F, this is the same as the integral shifted by G. So I evaluate my endomorphism on one. Multiply with G, and this we, we call we call this lambda G evaluated at f of one, and this we call symmetrized. So this is a symmetrized. Uh, this is a symmetrized uh, integral. So this means, uh, if you if you just evaluate with lambda, it will be quantum trace. So it will be quantum character. So it will be uh, it will not satisfy this trace relation, but up to s square. But if you if you shift this by g, then this will be a symmetrized integral. So so it will just on the nose trace function, uh, provided we have an unimodular Hopf algebra, and this determines the whole. So any so any modified trace is exactly this. So we we were able to to. Uh, to reduce this uh, partial trace, so this partial trace uh, relation uh, forces this guy to be to be so to, to satisfy uh, the integral. So, so we, we could relate the definition of the integral with with the partial trace relation. So this is what we did. Okay, and then using this result, so basically I gave a talk on this like a year ago on some conference where we proved this, and uh, actually before we wrote down this as a proof. Uh, people like uh, Derenci, so this is a student of Lanchi, uh, Guy and Patro, uh, they um, extended, so they basically improve the Lubashenko TQFT to, to like this real boardism category. So they really constructed such a TQFT because, for example, in the previous construction, uh, 
say, say just cylinder looked as a morphism from sigma disjoint union of minus sigma to, to, to nobody, this was, not a bo this was not allowed in my three, three cop because my each boundary component should be, should be connected. So this guy uh, was not allowed. So it were only, only such, such guys were allowed. Okay. And they extended this. So, so basically using this result, you can, you can really improve and you can get rid uh, of this condition. So this is zero, so it's not anymore zero. You can uh, have projective, so links colored by projective objects inside of your three manifold. You can get non-trivial invariant. And we also have an idea how actually um, <coughs> semi simplify this construction to obtain BRT. So we have a rigorous notion of semi simplification. So I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. version that gives you the multivariable Alexander polynomial. Um, Very good question. Uh, so it's what, not... Uh, yeah, so, so which version gives us? Which, which? Okay, yeah, that, that was one question. Okay. It's okay, should I answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so it's not exactly, so, so it's not exactly this, uh, 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 it's not exactly uh, this restricted at q equal i, but it's, um, but it's, um, it's this restricted uqsl2 uh, semi-product with h. So it's actually infinite dimensional algebra. And the TQFT for this, for this guy, which, uh, which uh, claimed to have uh, uh, to have uh, for links uh, multivariable Alexander and Rydemeister torsion for three manifolds was constructed by uh, Constantino, Gia, Patrou, and Blanchet. Okay. Uh, it uh, doesn't fit now. So this is exactly the lacking pieces and people are working on this. I have a student working. So it doesn't, uh, for the moment, this guy doesn't fit into the theorem. And it doesn't fit into the theorem because it's not finite dimensional. And therefore, uh, all the construction of these people so still, still doesn't extend in this language. So how it's do done in this paper, so I personally don't like very much. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, so like, uh, so yeah, uh, OK. So, so I think one should, one should so this is a very interesting project to, to, to embed this algebra into, into this setting. So this means to weaken the conditions that it's finite dimensional. and. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's unimodular, but it's not finite dimensional. And what you are doing, uh, it's like uh, you define grading there, and you try to be finite dimensional on each grading. And I have already a student working, so, so they already generalize the theorem on such a case, but it's still not yet completely uh, this, this. So, so we, are, we are approaching this, this case, but not yet. And thank you very much again for the question. So like this, uh, this is the only case when phi is i the only case where these invariants are indeed uh, categorified by Higgard flow homology. And it would be very interesting if somebody have an idea, perhaps physical idea, what could be a categorification of this guy if Q is not I by, say, 8 root of unity or 16 root of unity or something else. So, so what's the H in the right-hand side of that expression? So I'm confused. I thought that... Ah, oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. It's not this H. It's not this H. It's, it's you have generator here, which is um, E, F, and K with some relation, okay? And and this is H, which is supposed which K is supposed to be Q to the power H. Okay. Okay. So in in the work of uh, Garen Potter and Company. Um, I, I thought they got three manifold, in, well, it wasn't really three manifold invariants or invariants of links. There was a flat connection in the complement of a link or a flat connection of the three manifold involved, and which seemed to be coming from the fact that when you do surgery, um, you can't dissolve your link completely. There's some information left, and that, that information is really the monodromy of a, of a flat connection. Exactly, um, exactly. This is what I'm calling grading. Ah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you, you my, can, yeah, my question is going to be how that how that fits into what what you've 
told us. So, 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 so I'm, I'm saying that it's, it's not yet there because uh, so, for, for, so this machinery ah. which I present for you requires finite dimensional. This is not finite dimensional. Yeah, but I would say so. Say for any, each grading, so you choose like z over uh, over uh, c over z grading there. So for in each such component, yeah, you, you choose say so. So they have they have a very complicated definition of their their, uh, their category, exactly. And I think this should be improved. But at the end, the story should be like you choose in, in this, uh, so you, you fix a grading, and in each grading you will have a theory which, which will be, uh, so in, for each grading you will have like a, a finite dimensional uh, slice of your, of your infinite dimensional algebra, and on this finite dimensional slice you will have a modified trace uh, given by some integral. I see, and the, the grading leads to these extra choices. Exactly. Yeah. Something like a flat connection. Exactly, 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 Great. yeah, exactly, yeah. And so you said it recovers the right of Meister. Does it recover the right of Meister torsion or the Torai of torsion? Or? It's, uh, it's a TQFT, so it's an honest, what they claim, it's honest TQFT, so it's a recover uh, Torai of torsion with all signs and so on. So probably this is the easiest way to, instead of looking for the book of Torai, yeah, you can define signs here correctly just, just on the nose. Yeah. structures So they are coming from the choice. So like what they are, they are choosing. Um, so they are manifold need to to have a link inside. So projectively covered link, and uh, you choose a color. On the, so you choose a color. This is exactly what flat, flat structure on the boundary yeah, exactly of this link, and uh, so, and then you, you choose uh, this color correspond to like a, a cohomology class of uh, I don't know something like this with coefficient I think somewhere somewhere here here yeah. and uh, so I'm I, I'm I'm not uh, okay. so I'm not convinced for the moment that they have the best possible formulation.